I must say, the last few years have been somewhat of a crash understanding the highly complex, carefully nuanced, and rapidly advancing technological framework that now dictates how much of the world, especially the developed world and our core markets, operates. My digital lexicon has grown tenfold. If you had asked me when I took office some four years ago about data mining, machine learning, and blockchain, I wouldn't have had any idea what you were talking about. In truth, I still don't understand blockchain. I trust from listening to the much more learned professionals Royal Fidelity has brought together today that I will have a more thorough grasp on the concept. You see, I studied hotel management and accounting. I learned how to balance a budget, but not necessarily how to balance a data set. And while I can wax poetic about amortization and interests, I am still a little foggy on artificial intelligence. But I think that part of the benefit of this global digital disruption is that it forces those caught in its web, elected government officials, entrepreneurs, even adventurers, to be better, to learn more, to get ahead. They say the arc of history bends towards justice. In this technologically influenced environment, I would argue it bends towards advancement. Now, our conundrum, our million dollar question, is how to apply these lofty principles, which on paper promise to solve all of our problems, to an industry like tourism. The difficulty is that tourism is a people-orientated business. It's a face-to-face, -face, interactive, first-person experience. Drinking a margarita in the shade on an actual beach is a far cry from sneaking a few sips of some homemade concoction on your Friday Zoom call with a digital beatscape as your background. Believe me, I've done both, and I'll choose to go to the real thing every day. But that still doesn't mean we still can't leverage technology to our advantage. Here's how the Ministry of Tourism and Aviation is embracing the glo global digital disruption. Let's start with the basics. In 2020, pre-pandemic, we worked on overhauling our mission statement to bring it more in line with our new digitally guided ethos. It reads, and I quote, the Ministry of Tourism will achieve its vision to be a global industry leader in destination marketing and management through a holistic approach that is research, data, and technology driven. Incidentally, this was the first change to our mission statement since 1992. So although we might have been slow to adapt, as governments so often are, this was still a significant step in embracing the rapidly changing ecosystem we operated in. At the Ministry of Tourism, we wanted to leverage technology, not only to become more competitive within the region, but with ourselves. There are five key players in the Caribbean tourism market, each an order of magnitude greater in size than the Bahamas, the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Cuba, Puerto Rico, and our own small chain of islands. Whilst only accounting for less than 1% of the region's population, the Bahamas boasts a tourism market share of some 7%. This is no accident. In 2019, some 7.2 million visitors came to our shores, and we know we can beat this number. How? Through research, data, and technology-driven strategies that help up capture more of our core markets. Indeed, the blending of technological approaches within a historically people-to-people -people industry has become a leading component of our marketing strategy. Whereas government ministries are so often depicted as lumbering, sluggish, ponderous machines held hostage by bureaucracy, Leaning into digital trends has kept the Ministry of Tourism nimble, flexible, and ahead of the curve. Here's an example. We have a small marketing campaign localized in areas in the United States where we have determined through data mining, for instance, the COVID numbers are down and the appetite for travel is up. We are in the right zip codes at the right times to capture the right markets. Technology has helped us leverage our outreach globally. Indeed, 
concentrating it in areas we need it most to help take care of our tourism systems locally. Team Tourism has done significant work behind the digital curtain to embrace the opportunities this technologically driven environment has afforded us. Our tagline has always been, it's better in the Bahamas. Those of you who have visited, I am sure, can attest to that. But it's only better when the visitors can experience for themselves the best hospitality. In the spirit of a global digital disruption, and certainly a global tourism disruption, we've given potential visitors the very best of our virtual offerings. We are now experts at webinars and virtual events, <clears throat> and our commanding presence at virtual consumer trade shows has allowed the Bahamas to promote increased stakeholder engagement at some of the U.S.'s most important tourism-related events. We held a virtual diving pavilion, a world first, and a virtual romance expo, complete with virtual fashion shows, digital photo booths, and even a grand finale virtual Junkanoo celebration. It doesn't get much better than that. There are but a few examples of tourism's dynamic presence in the ever-expanding digital marketplace. We certainly haven't done it alone, as our engagement with the private sector and many of tourism's key stakeholders has helped to facilitate our own transition towards a much digitized way of doing business. One such development was the introduction of the Bahamas Travel Health Visa, a platform that has since become the envy of the Caribbean tourism market. We are nearing some 500,000 individually screened applications and are churning out some 6,000 every single day. Additionally, we have completely overhauled our Bahamas.com website. In the spirit of adapting to a more virtual lifestyle, our new hub of all things Bahamian comes fully equipped for the digital environment. The new site is a stunning testament to the effectiveness of blending the informational with the inspirational. With island hopping, itineraries, virtual island travel guides, and extensive photo and video galleries, we are making it that much easier for guests to fly away and visit our shores. It is little wonder then that the Bahamas was last year awarded Innovation Destination of the Year by Caribbean Journal for continued flexibility and advancement through the pandemic. But we feel we still have a long way to go. The global digital disruption is an awe-inspiring restructuring of the way people, businesses, and governments think about their approaches to everyday life. Events such as these are fantastic incubators of ideas and of inspiration. And takeaways from today will certainly guide much of our decision-making process moving forward. Indeed, if the arc of history bends exorably towards advancement, it only does so if we advance together. Nevertheless, our core mission remains the same, to provide exceptional, authentic experiences to our visitors and to increase ownership opportunities for Bahamians. Our embrace of the digital age complements rather than replaces these twin objectives. The balance is certainly a nuanced one and it indeed benefits us all. By working towards digitizing much of the minutia of travel, we can optimize the tourism experience and take away the complications of physically getting to a destination. Then, once tourists are in the Bahamas, they will have access to a digitally driven marketplace of opportunities created and hosted by Bahamians, Airbnbs, self-guided tour applications, and cryptocurrency initiatives. My office receives an overwhelming number of proposals from enterprising Bahamians who have created their own apps for tourists to use. This is a significant step in the right direction and one we will continue to promote in the years ahead. We will continue to work tirelessly towards expanding the Bahamas' digital footprint by incorporating data-driven insights to our social media, search engine, and email marketing. By staying abreast of all emerging media, the Bahamas will continue to position itself as a digital leader within the region. Who knows? You might even see me on TikTok soon. I'd like to thank the team at Royal Fidelity for inviting me to be part of their 2021 economic outlook. And I congratulate them 
for another successful year. Thank you.